Well, had he lived, Bobby Kennedy would have been 81 today, instead of which he was killed in one of the most famous political assassinations of modern American history. A Palestinian man, Sirhan Sirhan, was seized, charged, tried and convicted. Nearly 40 years on, he's still in jail, repeatedly denied parole. The violent deaths of prominent people, whether they be Bobby Kennedy's brother, JFK, or even Diana, Princess of Wales, routinely attract conspiracy theories. But that wasn't uppermost in the mind of Shane O'Sullivan when he began to look into the assassination. There's some strong language in his film. One thing is clear in this year of 1968, I believe in this country as I traveled across, and that is that the American people want no more Vietnam. In August in Chicago, the Democratic Party will nominate its candidate for President of the United States. There are two roads to that nomination. One is to seek commitments through discussions with political leaders. The other is to go to the people. June 5th, 1968, the Ambassador Hotel, Los Angeles. Bobby Kennedy wins the California Democratic primary and is tipped to beat Nixon to the White House. I think it's quite clear is, is that we can work together in the last analysis and that what has been going on within the United States over the period of the last three years, the divisions, the violence, the disenchantment with our society, the divisions whether it's between blacks and whites, between the poor and the more affluent, or between age groups or on the war in Vietnam, that we can start to work together. We are a great country and a selfish country and a compassionate country. And I intend to make that my basis for running and over the period of time. <laughs> Mayor Yorty has just sent me a message that we've been here too long already. <laughs> so, uh, my thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. Thank you. Moments later, he is assassinated while leaving through a kitchen pantry. Oh my God. Senator Kennedy has been shot in the head. It's only two months since the assassination of Martin Luther King. Twenty-four year old Palestinian Sirhan Sirhan is seen firing at Kennedy and is arrested as the lone assassin. But for nearly forty years debate has raged over whether a second gunman was involved. Police diagrams based on the autopsy show the fatal shot came from behind, but witnesses place Sirhan's gun several feet in front of Kennedy. The actual shooter of Robert Kennedy was standing behind Robert Kennedy, according to the autopsy report. Sirhan was standing in front of him, face to face. The distance between the muzzle of the assailant's weapon and Robert Kennedy's body was somewhere between actual contact and no more than three inches and the weapon from which the shots were fired was held at a sharp upward angle, again from the rear. All the witnesses state that Sirhan's weapon was held between one and a half and six feet away from Robert Kennedy horizontally in relation to the floor. The autopsy report exonerates Sirhan. Behind me is the famous Ambassador Hotel where Robert Kennedy was assassinated that night. It's now a construction site, shortly to be a high school project in memory of Bobby Kennedy. I started running a screenplay three years ago based on this case, fascinated by the conspiracy theories. During the course of my research, I found new video and photographs that suggested three CIA operatives were at the hotel that night, and I believe involved in the assassination. Agent number one, the Indian man in the white shirt at the back of the room, moments after the speech and just before the shooting. I think this man is David Morales. Moments after the shooting, agent number two, Gordon Campbell, walks from the direction of the pantry with a small container in his hand as a Latin man waves him towards an exit. Thirty minutes after the shooting, here is Agent 1 again, David Morales. I also found several photographs of these agents earlier in the evening. Here, Agent 2, Gordon Campbell, stands in the ballroom hours before the shooting with a third agent. These officers worked together in 1963 at JM Wave, the CIA's Miami base for its secret war on Castro. Bradley Ayers worked with these men at JM Wave and first confirmed my identification of Morales. 
this definitely, uh, from the profile, is hugely similar. The body language is very, very much characteristic of Morales. See how he moves back and forth very casually, does not attract attention to himself? That That is no question. Bradley also recognized his former case officer, Gordon Campbell. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, that's uh, I, I could I could certainly verify 90% ID of Gordon Campbell, and less a little hair, as I remembered him. Uh, the facial features are certainly his. Absolutely. Obviously, the two of them are together. They're looking for a way out because this fellow is guiding him, showing him an exit. Uh, obviously, he's got something in his hand. I think it's in, impossible to, to determine what it is. These men are alleged to have hated the Kennedys for withdrawing air support for the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. And Morales admitted to his ex-lawyer that he was involved in both Kennedy assassinations. Well, it was something like, uh, I was in Dallas uh, when, when, I, uh, uh, when, when we got that motherfucker, and, and I was in Los Angeles when we got the little bastard. What, what it said to me was that uh, uh, he was in some way implicated with uh, the death of John Kennedy. And, and let's go one step further, and also uh, Bobby. An interesting claim from a friend of Morales, but until now there's been no photographic evidence. I traveled to Washington to meet Wayne Smith, who worked with Morales at the U.S. Embassy in Havana in 1959. This photograph of Morales dates from the same time. Would Smith recognize Morales in the video? David Morales. Launches the ball with That's him. That's him. That's Dave Morales. Really? <sighs> yeah, I'm virtually certain. Is, is there anything, anything? No, we see him again. We oh, see him again. Go ahead. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's and we'll see him yeah. repeat it. Yeah, I mean, it turns that way. That's, that's Morales. That's Morales. Yeah, I knew Morales quite well. He worked in the CIA station in Havana when I was uh, third secretary of the political section. And uh, they got to know him fairly well and saw him again uh, a number of times. He came to Buenos Aires when I was political counselor down there. And uh, we had dinner at a friend's house one evening. So I, yeah, I have no hesitation in saying that's, that's Morales. I traveled to the other side of the country to meet up with a man who worked in covert operations in the 60s and was at the Ambassador Hotel that night. David Rayburn had been shown the photograph of Morales and remembered seeing him there. That's the same man that you saw in the photograph? Oh, yeah. That's him. I didn't see him in the ballroom. I saw him out in the lobby area. In fact, I, I probably saw him several times. He was in and out. I just wanted to have a look at this photograph. Uh, the two men in the center. This this photograph was taken, I think, a couple of hours before the assassination. So we're just looking at the two figures here in the middle. I just wonder if you saw either of those men that night. This man here, the bald one. Yeah. I think he was talking to uh, Morales at one time. It's like he was standing talking to him. If Campbell was the man on the left of the photograph, who is the guy on the right? I went back to the East Coast to meet a lawyer at Cornell University, Ed Lopez. In 1978, he was a 23-year-old investigator for the Congressional Committee looking into the JFK assassination. I thought he might know our third man. Let me, let me just take you back a minute. Here we were, a congressional committee, investigating who might have killed a president back in 1963. As you know, the majority of the American public at the time said there had been a conspiracy. The man the CIA called out of retirement to work as their liaison to the House Select Committee on Assassinations was George Joannidis. He never disclosed he worked as Chief of Psychological Warfare Operations at the CIA's Miami base in 1963. I saw George Joannidis 
practically every day for months. George Ioannidis was the guy who was supposed to be our point person. But when we got down to work, he was our business. What we could see, what we couldn't see, why we could see something, why we couldn't see something, why it was redacted, why it wasn't redacted. Let me um, now show you a photograph that was taken in the Ambassador Hotel the night Robert Kennedy died. And I'd like you to look at the figure on the right center of frame. Well, when I look at this picture, um, the guy is young um, and in shape, um, always standing, you know, stands erect. Um, it's the way I remember him being. Um, the glasses, um, his hair slightly receding. At the time, um, it was dark. Um, by the time that I got to meet him, it was graying. But, um, but it's just, you know, I mean, you just look at him and you say, this is, this is the guy that I spent many hours with um, at Langley. This is, this is George Jones. Not everyone I spoke to could identify our three CIA agents. I interviewed Tom Kleins and Ed Wilson, both former agents and close colleagues of David Morales. They said I and all the others were mistaken, but they weren't willing to go on camera. Could there be an innocent explanation for the presence of these three CIA agents at the Ambassador Hotel that night? Is David Morales a suitable figure to protect Bobby Kent? No. <laughs> no, I mean, in my wildest imagination, I couldn't imagine assigning David Morales to protect any of the Kennedys. Suspicion? High, high suspicion. Yes. I have to, I can't deny that. So. Uh, why they were doing the thing that th things that they were doing, uh, I'm surprised that that was never investigated. What do you think needs to be done now? Well, I think the um, key people at the CIA um, need to go back to anybody who might have been around back then, bring them in, and interview them. Ask, is this? Gordon Campbell, is this George Jornidis? Did you know about any operation going on? If you didn't, then why the hell were they there? After so many interviews and some conflicting testimony, my gut feeling is that still these three senior CI operatives were the men behind the assassination. Who were these men and why were they at the hotel that night? The CIA and the Los Angeles Police Department owe the public an explanation before the truth behind the Robert Kennedy assassination is lost to history. There are some who talk about my youth. It is true I am younger than many who have run for president and older than many of those who founded this country. Whatever my years, however, I would gladly match my experience with that of others who have aspired to the presidency. And after all, we are still a young country. If you'd like to watch that film again, it's on our website. Do tell us whether you're convinced by the identifications. Shana Sullivan, who is the author of that piece, is with us here. Indication that they, they looked in a lot of places, but they didn't look in the correct places during the original investigation. Now, formally, I believe the CIA have said what about these guys? They say they don't comment. You know, I mean, you, the, the, the comment you'd expect, that they can't go into um, previous operatives' um, identities, and that also they have no domestic jurisdiction. Um, so the question that we're asking is, we have interviewed various people who knew these men well. They say that they're the men in the photographs, so we're asking the CIA and the Los Angeles Peace Department to address that question. You know, is this the men we think they are, and why are they there? Why do you think they were there? Well, I don't think there's any credible explanation for why they would be there if they are CIA operatives, and that's the question that we're tr trying to clear up. Um, they wouldn't have been uh, Kennedy security if you know the men's backgrounds. They'd have professed hatred of the Kennedys. Morales made the comment that we listened to that he was in Dallas in 63 and Los Angeles in 68. You don't get any um, anxiety about potential libel suits? Well, we know that uh, Morales died in 1978, just weeks before he was due to be called before the House Select Committee on Assassinations. Uh, Janidas died in 1990. Gordon Campbell may still be out there. so. Yeah, a libel suit is a possibility, but then we also would have discovery in terms of showing how important this Do you reckon, material is. Uh, assuming there is much more to it than yeah. the straight Sahan Sahan story, do you think we'll ever get to the bottom of it? 
I think it's important that we do. I mean, the, there's a guy called Paul Schrade who was walking behind Kennedy on the night and he was shot in the head, and he's been one of the leading campaigners to reopen the case for years because of the second gun theory and various doubts that there have been around. So I think this evidence is quite important because it's the first time that we've actually showed a CIA presence uh, on the night at a domestic assassination, and it's important that we get some answers to this from the, the relevant authorities. Shane Sullivan, thank you. Coming up on the program.